welcome to Cooking with Simple Recipes and Delicious Foods. I'm Chef Farrak Atlas and I'm going to walk you through some very neat and different ideas for your Thanksgiving feast. So today what I'm going to do is one of our first choices is mashed potatoes. Everybody's familiar with uh, our traditional mashed potato. Today I'm going to put a little twist on that and I'm going to do a yam infused mashed potatoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some baby red potatoes and I'm going to get those boiling and then I'm going to, to that, <clears throat> when we go to mix, I'm going to use some sweet potato puree. So we're going to have some fun with this. It's going to be a lot of, it's going to be a lot different than you used to. Hang on. So to some boiling water that I have, I'm going to add some baby red potatoes that I diced up. And I, I cut these in about quarter inch chunks. You can cut them a little bigger or smaller if you'd like. I'm going to add that to my water. And I got about, in my water right now, I got about a pound and a half of, of diced potatoes. So to that, I'm going to add a little bit of sea salt. It's about a teaspoon. And I'm not going to add any other flavoring until we go into our mixing bowl. So while this is coming up, I'm going to add to my mixing bowl some heavy cream. And that's about two ounces. And I'm going to add some sour cream of about an ounce. When my potatoes come up to a boil, I'm going to check them and make sure that they're nice and, and soft. Uh, we're not looking at al dente. We want cooked all the way through. Not mush falling apart, but cooked all the way through. Still nice and firm, but cooked. And what we'll do with that is we'll just take a little sample piece and make sure that it's ready to go. And it is spoon tender. So what I'll do with this is I will take this over and put it through my strainer. Be careful during this part. As the steam rises from the uh, pot, it can burn you. So be very careful and pour away from yourself when you're pouring into your strainer. I'm gonna make sure and I strain out all the water so that I don't have a lot of liquid when I do add it to my mixing bowl because that's going to result in a, uh, a loose mashed potato that won't hold form when you put it on your plate or put it in your, um, put it on display. So I'm in my mixing bowl, back to the mixer. And I'm going to use my paddle attachment. Some people like to use a whip. I prefer the paddle. It gives a, a, a smoother, creamier finish. And that's what I'm looking for. Right now, I'm adding cubed uh, fresh cream butter. And that's about two ounces. I added my cream and my sour cream ahead of time. Usually people will add that at this time. I like to put it in at the bottom so I get a, a, a base going. So to this, I'm gonna let this whip for about, oh, about a minute. And to it, I'm gonna add some fresh sea salt. 
and some fresh cracked black pepper. You can use white pepper if you like, or you can use some a stone ground if you like. I prefer just a fresh crack. Now I got a nice whip on it. What I'm gonna do is slow it down and I'm gonna add my sweet potato puree. And I'm adding about four ounces. Now I'm gonna turn it back on and I'm gonna go for about another half a minute Make sure you scrape down the bowls because as you cook, or as it spins, I should say, it does rise up and stick on the side of the bowl. So just go ahead and stir it down and make sure that every piece gets mixed really well. So I'm gonna give it a little blast. I'm gonna go all the way on high, get a little high whip, and I'm done. When doing this dish, we can take this and set this up, cover it with a little bit of foil, put it in, put it away in the oven, and then brown and serve right before dinner, or we can make this the last piece. This, this action coming off the mixer, it's ready to serve. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plate a little bit of this, and I'll show you how it's gonna look for the festivities. So now I got my potatoes done. I'm gonna go into my, my second stage. And what that's gonna be is, I'm gonna do some green beans with a jalapeno walnut. So this is gonna be my version of doing a um, green bean almondine with a kicked up, kicked up flare. So I got a, a large jalapeno, and what I'm gonna do with this, and I'm gonna split it, and I'm gonna use half. I'm gonna, I want this to be spicy, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna trim out the seed patch at all. I'm gonna use the whole thing. And with that, it's gonna kick up our recipe quite a bit. For some, this might be too hot. Um, if it is, you can tone down and use a quarter or, or less. The easiest way to tone the heat down in this dish would be not using the seeds. But again, that's where we're gonna take it to the next level and have something different. So, I got some whole butter, about a half a tablespoon. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let that come up to heat and I'm gonna begin my saute. I got some nice green beans that I've peeled, um, or pinched the tips and uh, blanched. I blanched them for three minutes in boiling water and cooled them off in an ice bath. That's it. So we're ready to go with the saute. I'm gonna add my beans. I'm gonna add my jalapeno. I'm gonna give this a couple stirs. And I'm gonna add my nuts. I got two ounces of fresh walnuts. And what we wanna do with that is we would just wanna get a nice saute get the butter a little brown, but we really just wanna heat up everything so it gets a nice flavor from the nuts and also from the uh, jalapeno. The longer you cook this dish, the hotter it'll get. So I just finished it off with a little bit of sea salt and some cracked black pepper. 
all in all, this is a very easy dish to do. It's a very um, uh, different than everybody's used to. Again, with the traditional just being some butter, some almonds and the green beans, a little bit of uh, crispy onion over the top. This is a totally different wheel. You're gonna have the crispiness of the walnuts. You're gonna have the freshness of the beans, but you're also gonna have the heat from the jalapenos. So to this, I'm gonna keep my plating going, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to our feast platter. So now I'm done and I'm going to go to serve. If you guys could smell this, it smells really lovely. So the next dish that I'm gonna go and do is gonna be another side and it's gonna be a date and fig compote. Very simple. Again, I'm starting off in my pan with a little bit of uh, whole butter. It's about a tablespoon of whole butter. And what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> bring that up to temp and I'm gonna saute my fresh dates. I pull the seeds out, so there's still, there's still halves. I want to keep it that way, so when I cook it down, I still got whole structure. Um, if you don't, if you don't like it in this way, you can cut it down, or you can run it through a food processor. So, <clears throat> to this, I'm gonna add some fresh ginger. Again, an ounce. I'm gonna add an ounce and a half of fig jelly. And I'm gonna add half an ounce of fresh honey and this is honey in the raw uh, you can use you can use regular honey if you prefer I like the honey in the raw it, it to me gives a better taste so all I'm doing right now is just incorporating my my fig jelly in. As soon as I melt down all everything and heat up, I wanna let this simmer for about two to three minutes. And you can add to this, you could add some white wine, you could add a little bit of um, Rice wine, if you'd like, uh, Chardonnay. Um, for me, I prefer just to, to let it reduce and, and get thick on its own. But you can definitely add the alcohol if you, if you like. It takes uh, the complexity of the taste to another level. So now I'm gonna let this reduce on low for like I said, about two to three minutes. And you can see the sugars from the honey and the sugars from the jelly are starting to caramelize now. 
that's gonna give us a really nice flavor. Now, the, the cool thing with this dish is we can serve this on turkey, we can serve this on ham, we can serve this on beef. It, it's a really nice accompaniment to all those different proteins. And it's something, again, that's a little different than the norm. So I'm feeling now, I'm gonna feel the, the actual dates and, and see where they are and see if they're at the consistency that I want them to be. And I feel that they're, they're, they're there. They're at that nice, almost a um, little bit past al dente. So I got that, I got them where I want them to be. And what I'm gonna do right this is I'm gonna take them off the stove and I'm gonna go to plate. So here we go, we got our finished product and we have a yam infused mashed potatoes, uh, green beans and walnut saute with the jalapeno and our date and fig compote. Thank you again for joining us here at Chuck's Produce. Hope to see you soon.